This has been a tough week for the city of Milwaukee. And joining us now to talk about Officer Peter Jerving and everything that's happened, Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman. Chief, we've been thinking about your department and you. How you been holding up? It's been uh, tough. I know that uh, every day that we have to, uh, you know, work through our grief, uh, understand that we still have a balancing act. We still have to respond and be out there to protect our city, but uh, we have to also heal. And so I know that there's been some really great support and we're supporting each other and also doing self-care. Let's talk about that support. I mean, we've seen a lot of it. We saw a lot of people who wrote letters, people just offering their condolences. How has that been to see from the community? For the uh, past couple of days, it's been overwhelming, but also really uh, appreciated. Uh, knowing that that type of support from our community is out there is reassuring. Um, I know that you know we're really trying to work through the uh, grief of losing you know a brother in arms in district number four, and that seeing that helps with the healing process. So you know between the food, uh, the outpouring of flowers, and other type of support has been a true blessing. Our viewers, number one thing they're asking us. What can we do, not only show support for the officer, the fallen officer's family, but also the officers who are still out there on the streets? What, is, what can we do? Well, I always say that, uh, you know, thanking an officer is always the easiest. Uh, knowing um, that the work that's being done is appreciated, uh, prayers is always appreciated. But, uh, you know, whatever moves your heart. You know, I don't want to tell any particular one thing because, um, you know, there's been blank has been giving flowers. I think that uh, it's uh, based on, you know, what is within your own means and uh, ability to do. And I believe that we're really appreciative of any of it. Anytime people or something like this happens, we know it's tragic, but a lot of people then kind of lose this sense of security and safety. How do you tell people that the city of Milwaukee, you know, the police officers will continue to do their jobs and the city is you know, as safe as it can be? As I said, the first press conference about leaning in, understanding that uh, we still have a responsibility to do. Uh, as a executive, we have to be sensitive that we need to make sure that our people are well. But there's a lot of individuals stepping up within the department um, and also a lot of our law enforcement partners. And so we're not going to leave the city unprotected or not having the type of uh, robust impact in regards to what we're dealing with on the city streets. But also we are giving some you know, healing time, especially for those who have served on Officer Jervin's shift, to be able to have, you know, again, that grieving moment. I mean, this is family, and we need to make sure that we respect that. We went many years in this city without any officers dying on the streets. You've been around a long time. It was over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then if you count Kuhur, who died, uh, killed by a drunk driver on his way home, mm -hmm. it's six officers in five years mm -hmm. who have died on the streets of Milwaukee. What has changed? I believe that you've seen just a lot of risky behavior um, when you start talking about whether it's the reckless driving, whether you see the introduction of firearms into situations that has no bearing or reason for it. Uh, we need to understand that we need to have, again, an all hands on deck approach. You know, here we have a situation where there is a young one who should never have had a gun in his hands in the first place. What was the intervention? Where was the, hey, why do you have that? And so there's a personal responsibility. The market police department understand that we are the front line of safety, but we all have a hand in creating a safe environment, ensuring no one's out there reckless driving, killing, you know, officers are going home from work or having a situation where they have to worry about those who should not have weapons in their hands uh, being accessed and, and using it. You talk about responsibility, but how much of that falls on the police department or say, you know, um, the court system? I mean, where does that responsibility lie or is it in the person themselves? So I will say it's a collective responsibility and I do understand, especially in regards to what is our prime pro uh, directive, which is to provide frontline security, uh, being that uh, what sworn officers do, to go out there to understand that you're to be at the tip of the spear in regards to safety. But it doesn't stop there. You know, we do have all responsibilities with their, their, your residents, within the business, within our court system, the criminal justice system. Um, understand what your role is and how you're supposed to contribute to the overall impact of public safety. Chief, we're running out of time, but quickly here. The funeral's on Monday. Correct. This will be the first time you have to give a eulogy like this. What are you going to say? What do you want the community and your officers to know? Well, it's all about support. It's all about um, celebrating the life of Officer Jervin and this understanding that, uh, you know, we see our officers, what they're doing day to day, and that we thank them for it. Do you, have any, do you have any final message for the community as far as what they've done to help or anything of that sort? I say thank you, and uh, please keep it going. I think that it's important for our officers to see that.
Thank you. Chief, we appreciate your time and what has been, again, a very difficult week here for our city. Appreciate you. Thanks, Thank Chief. you.